Welcome back once again everybody. So today we're going to be looking at shaping and possibly even more importantly thicknessing the headstock. Let's get to it. In order to be doing the thicknessing part I'm actually going to be using my new toy. This is a bobbin sander or a spindle sander if you like, an oscillating spindle sander and it is exactly the same model as the Triton one you will see a lot of people using. It's actually branded Von Haus, which is a different German company, but quite frankly, they're all made in the same factory. They just come in different colors, exactly the same, all interchangeable parts. So if you're thinking of buying one, just buy the cheapest one out of whatever brand you find. Um, speaking of cheap, there is one thing to note that I notice unboxing this thing for the first time. It seems very solidly made. I'm quite happy with it, but as with all tools in the kind of the budget end of the price bracket, when it boils down to it, if I check the alignment between the edge of that spindle and the table, it's off probably by about a degree or so, which for most, for most applications, it's probably absolutely fine. It's not really ideal for what we're doing today, but I think we'll live. Um, looking at the construction of the thing, I think if I really wanted to, I could probably dismantle it and start shimming or adjusting nuts and things on the bottom of the table to get into that. But obviously that would void the warranty and I don't really want to get into that today. But it's just one of those things when you buy cheap tools, that's what happens. So anyway, this thing's obviously normally meant for carving curves on the outside of guitars and things. We're going to be using it to shape the edge of the headstock in the usual manner. But in addition to that, you can use it for thicknessing small bits of wood. All I'm going to be doing is effectively clamping on a sort of makeshift fence at a set thickness. And then I will be feeding in the neck with the back of the neck facing the spindle. And as I push that in, that will thickness that up and I will stop at the sort of volute point. The only thing to note, as always, doing things in the wrong order, because I've got my fretboard on there, I'm probably going to have to glue a little something on the head of the headstock to allow it to sit against the fence without the fretboard fouling the actual sander or pushing the back of the neck into the sander and throwing the angle completely off. But uh, before we get to that, it's probably now finally a good time to just remove a little bit of excess on the end of the headstock and then we'll get to thicknessing I guess. should hopefully be able to see just that I've put a pencil line on here at the depth I want my fence set which is 28 mil the neck itself at the tip will be about 15 mil and then by the time you factor on the bit of wood I put on the back that's what it comes to so that's my line I just need to get my fence securely clamped along that line and we should hopefully be good to go all right well, it took a lot of fettling, the jigging this up was a little bit harder than I thought, but I've got everything in alignment as much as I can, so it's just safety equipment on, and away we go, I think.
was definitely effective to some extent, but my jig definitely moved back during the first pass, I can see by a fair bit. So I'm gonna to have to readjust, readjust this and do at least one more pass, possibly several. Um, I was asking it to take off a bit much in one run, I think, so let's try again. Just a quick note for any residents of the UK watching, um, if you are thinking about buying one of these machines, or actually even if you're not, um, you can get additional discount by going through topcashback.co.uk, which I've left a referral link for down below. Um, you will be helping the channel out if you do use that link, because I think just for you signing up, I actually get money for that happening. Um, but it is a website I use at least once a week. It's really, really good. Uh, when it comes to things like home utilities, you can get like £100 cash back just for going through that website first before you make your purchase. And it's there's no catches, it's all just withdraw to your bank account. I guess if there's one catch, it's just that it takes a few, uh, it can take a few months to, for the money to actually come through, but it's always nice to just have an extra £100 or whatever land in your bank account. So yeah, definitely check that out. As I say, links below. with everything else I don't know if it's exactly perfect but it looks like it's pretty much worked as intended I think my my jig is obviously not good enough um, as with most tools of this description I don't know why it's just actually quite hard to make something that clamps around the edges quite easy at least with regular clamps um, but I'm sure I could jig something up a little bit better for future use but I think it's done the job there for now in fact I'm gonna take this piece off have a look there so yeah not bad at all so next up I've got to actually shape the headstock I've got the piece of wood stuck on the front again once more because it's going to go face down on the table in order to do the sanding and shaping. And I've used a very mild temporary adhesive, it's kind of like post-it note strength really, just to adhere a picture of the headstock shape to the back of the neck. Because I've got it on the back of the neck, it means I'm gonna get an inverse image if you like so it's actually going to be kind of almost like a reverse PRS headstock it wouldn't have quite been a PRS headstock anyway because the plans I'm using this horn is actually a little bit longer so it'll be slightly different horns and a mirror image of a PRS headstock so it'll have an element of uniqueness to it I suppose although we all know what it'll ultimately look like but uh, yeah I think that's about ready to go there so we'll move over to the sander and see what it's like cutting into one of these long curves.
first side looking okay there. Nice smooth curves. You'll notice I'm kind of slightly chopping off the points on the side of the headstock there because in truth the blank was ever so slightly too too short but that's looking good. Let's go for the other big curve now shall we? That's the second side about done. It's going okay so far. I'm obviously, um, I really should have removed a lot of this excess with the bandsaw before taking it to the sander really. I'm just wearing out the sanding bobbin far too fast. Um, but, you know, I was keen to, keen to use the sander and get familiar with it. But no, it's working well. We're not really getting any tear out on the edges, which is nice. Um, can't complain. It's getting a little bit late in the day now, so I think I'm just going to pause here and come back tomorrow. And we're back in the room, hopefully with uh, working audio this time. So, we're going to carry on as we did. We've already got the two outside curves done. We're now going to go for these two bottom curves. The top one I'm definitely going to need to use a smaller bobbin on so I'm going to go for that one last. Uh, these ones I'm not entirely sure whether I'll just get away with the bigger one or not. So we'll give it a try. I was going to originally go from the point of being flat with the neck and then go towards the point on the headstock but the more I think about it I think I actually want to start on this side and come in towards the neck just to sort of minimize the amount of time I'm in contact with the neck and potentially taking excess material off that I don't want to so let's crack on as we were <laughs> Well, that's not gone too badly. Got a nice shape on the headstock there, good corners. Looks as it should. Unfortunately, I've gone a little bit too far in with the sander at this point, and it's just took the edge, or just nipped into the edge of the binding there, so you can see the binding's a little bit thinner than it should be. But I'm just gonna have to live with that. It's to be expected. Okay, so on with the on with the point now. I'm just going to have to swap out the sander drum for that and then we'll get right to it. So there we have it, that is one shaped headstock. It's a little bit of a shame as I say that I went in just a bit too far on there. Won't affect the playability at all, it just means the binding will look ever so slightly too thin there if you look too hard. Very easily done, unfortunately. I was just talking to my friend Ash, hi Ash, 
and he was saying he normally shapes his headstock above the nut just to make sure he avoids that problem. But if that's the worst problem that I end up on this end up with on this guitar, considering everything I'm planning to do with it, then uh, I'll be more than happy with that. I would like to take the template off and show you at this point, but I'm leaving this piece of wood on for a very good reason, and that is because while I've got it on, it'd be a very good opportunity to drill the tuning peg holes because the template there has them indicated and having this piece of wood firmly glued to the back will help prevent any tear out if I just drill straight through as well. So that's the next task. I would have actually done that now, but we need to find the right drill bit for the job and I don't have one here today. I want to make sure that I'm using a really high quality centre point bit of the correct width and everything before I go ahead with that. So that will be next time. And then we might get on to shaping the neck. So until next time, goodbye.